feel like Pepsi Pepsi killed Michael Jackson. The hair fire? Yeah, and then he got addicted to painkillers after that. It was all downhill from there. Might have been Pepsi's fault. I don't know if it's that, it's not their fault he touched kids, but... <laughs> what a weird ad. Pepsi, it'll make you want to touch kids. Well, I don't want that, but I do enjoy a good Pepsi, so... Yeah. I'm torn. I'll drink it. Just stay away from parks. I won't stay away from parks. <laughs> I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is season four of The Bible Reloaded. Did you think we would make four seasons? I thought we'd make like two episodes, get bored, and like start shooting heroin. I don't know. I like heroin. I'm okay with heroin. Actually, I don't know if I like heroin. Let's I assume it. I like heroin. I think everyone who does heroin probably is like, yeah, let's get some more heroin. Like, no one's like, one heroin. That was all right. I'm not doing one that again. Heroin, I will take one heroin. One unit of heroin. Sir, I will have one heroin, and then I will be done. <laughs> Who's the guy? Like you said, sir. So it's like there's like a there's like a guy like with a mustache, maybe a bowler cap. Yeah. He's got the heroin. Yeah. You just walk up. To, I'd like one heroin, sir. And he That's goes, what it was like, like in the 1920s. Sir, I will have one heroin. <laughs> I say. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. So today we're doing Deuteronomy. Yeah. And, and when I not... say that, I don't mean like, hey, we're going to do two chapters of Deuteronomy. No, we're we're going to do all of Deuteronomy today. <laughs> yeah, because it's terrible. I really don't like it. It's a bad read. Literally, um, it's a recap of Leviticus told I, through different means. I assume it's just different scriptures telling the same stories. Right. So we're going to take out uh, various parts that we find interesting or funny. We're going to talk about those. Other than that, though, uh, not a filler episode, but it's a lot of the stuff you've already heard. <laughs> Yeah, so we didn't want to redo all of it, so we're just going to power fuck right through it. Yep. So we're just like, so every time we flip a page, that's us just... That's a thrust. One, one big that's thrust. A, that's a huge thrust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, like have tiny, we have tiny penises, but really, really powerful thrusts, so just it makes super, up for it. Super girthy. Yeah, but they're like short. They're kind of like, um, I don't know, they look like a butternut squash. So basically how Deuteronomy starts out is uh, it starts right after they leave Horeb. Um, which we read it, you don't care about it, it doesn't matter. Um, and then they appoint leaders, which is basically like appointing council that they already did. Then they send those spies out, and then a rebellion against the Lord again. Oh no, and then people died like before. Uh, and now they're wandering in the wilderness. Yes, we're all the way back to wandering in the wilderness. They just like to wander. I don't know, is, is that a thing that people do? I like, know. I know people like to go on hikes, but they're not, like, hikes, like, you know your destination. Wandering's just like, I'm going out there. Who knows if I'm going to come back? Why didn't they just... Like, I know they couldn't enter the supposed promised land for 40 years, but mm -hmm. couldn't they just been like, let's just sit here for 40 years. Yeah. Maybe we don't have to wander around and fight people. Let's just... Let's just camp here. No, it's about the blood sport. Wait. Okay. Blood sport. Anyways. Um, so so yeah. in their wanderings, they come across a, a group of people. Uh, and there's something kind of interesting in there, at least in other versions of the Bible. Yeah. So briefly, we will go over that. And this is in Deuteronomy 2.10. Yes, we've already gone through two. The Emites used to live there, a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. That's interesting, because we're using the NIV, as you know, and when I was researching this, I um, looked at the King James on accident, and um, turns out they're giants. Yeah. So we have more giants just it's around. It's interesting that uh, as the versions of the Bible get newer and newer, they, mm -hmm. they slowly take out more and more mythical things like giants. Or in this version, uh, instead of unicorns, they say it's... hooved oxen, I believe. Yeah. So, like, that's not just a translation thing. That's someone saying, we should probably take the unicorns out <laughs> and the giants, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So it's a conscious decision, but uh, a valid one. If I were editing a book I wanted people to think was real, I'd be like, we should probably get rid of the unicorns, right? Yeah. Nah, okay. So they wander some more, and basically they uh, find another kingdom that they get mad at for some reason, presumably because they won't let them cut their dicks or something. Yeah. I don't know. Something petty. I'm sure it has foreskins written all over it. Yeah. Uh, and then this happens. When Sihan and all his army came out to meet us in battle at Jahaz, the Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we struck him down together with his sons and his whole army. Interesting that it's now in, like, first person, like, yeah. with us. And this is possibly, as we've said before, some people think Moses yeah, um, wrote parts of the Old Testament. Maybe this is where they're getting that idea. Yeah, uh, This is actually claimed to be Moses uh, more often than not when I argue with people. Uh, but there's a little bit at the end where it's clearly not Moses, and we'll explain it when we get to it. Yeah. At that time, we took all his towns and completely destroyed them. Men, women, and children. We left no survivors. They sound proud of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, we killed a bunch of kids, guys! And they weren't Jew kids, so it doesn't count. Yeah. Those are the good guys of this story. <laughs> That's horrifying. Imagine in The Mighty Ducks 2. If at the end of The Mighty Ducks 2, The Mighty Ducks killed that other team from that other country <laughs> and slaughtered them blood all over the ice would you still think the mighty ducks were the heroes probably but that's because they're a ragtag group and they're quirky but still the hebrews don't have that going for them they're just people so when you kill the other people brutally you cease being the hero of the story also we should probably watch mighty ducks too you know you know what see it's because sihan didn't have the knuckle puck but the livestock and the plunder from the towns we captured and carried off for ourselves. Because, come on, we're, we're, we're not ridiculous. We're taking the cows. <laughs> from, That's just a waste. <laughs> from Aeor on the rim of the Orin Gorge. From the town in the gorge. Who puts a town in a gorge? What a terrible town planner. <laughs> Even as far as the Gilead. Not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them. But in accordance with the commandment of the Lord our God, you did not encroach any of the land in the, of the Amorites, neither the land amongst the course of the Jabbok, nor around the towns and the hills. I don't even know why we put maps up anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Here's a picture of, like, what's a good picture? I don't even know if this exists because we edit this afterward. Let's say, here's a picture of a dinosaur having sex with a car. <laughs> Now in uh, Deuteronomy 3, verse 4, we continue a similar story. The defeat of Og, king of Bashan. At that time, we took all his cities. There was not one of his 60 cities that we did not take from them. That's a solid conquest. Let's be honest, though. If you have 60 cities, you don't need that many cities. Yeah. That's too many. You were going to fall apart Just anyway. Just the fat. All these cities were fortified with high walls, with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. <laughs> Wait, so... So I like the, the guy writing this. There was those two cities. They had walls, but we used our flame tornado to get down. Rest of them, fucking like huts. <laughs> We're gonna call them cities in the book. We completely destroyed them, as we had done with Sihan, king of Heshbon, destroying every city, men, women, and children. But all the livestock and plunder from their cities we carried off for ourselves. So this is the same, but times sixty from the thing we just read before. Yeah. So. I don't even, do we even have to drive home the point that these are violent fucking people that kill children? We could reference Mighty Ducks 3 if that would help. I don't remember Mighty Ducks 3. I don't either. I don't think I've seen it. Is it on Netflix Instant Stream? We could look at it. I don't know. Maybe later. No. Not on there. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Okay, moving on to Moses Forbidden to Cross the Jordan, which is in uh, Deuteronomy 3, verse 21. At that time, I commanded Joshua. And as we said, this is uh, written as if it's in the perspective of Moses. We'll see. At the time, I commanded Joshua. You've seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. So again, as we know, Joshua is in line to become the patriarch of the religion. So Moses is basically saying, hey, check out all the shit we just did. You're going to be able to do that shit too, even though you won't be almost 200 years old <laughs> like I am. Probably about to die, but I probably shouldn't tell you that because that's spoiling uh, uh, what's going to happen. 
Then we go to Idolatry Forbidden, which is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15. Uh, this is an interesting connection to uh, Islam, too, but, and we'll talk about that as we get there. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully, so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether it formed like a man or a woman, or like an animal on earth, or any bird that flies in the air, or like any creature that moves along the ground, or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up at the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshipping things the Lord your God has appointed to all nations under the heaven. So, basically no art? Yeah, this like I said, ties into Islam, because in Islam, you're not supposed to do art. If you'll notice, let's say you walk into a Catholic church, you'll mm -hmm. typically, with how the architecture there works, you'll see stained glass imagery of maybe the Virgin Mary or mm -hmm. Jesus or the apostles. Which was very pragmatic in the early days of the church. I mean, they, they had illiterate followers, and they were trying to spread the word of Jesus, and it was basically a picture book is the only way people could not necessarily read, but understand the message is like, show them pictures. Yeah. But this, uh, as you can see, is directly opposing the idea that God says, hey, don't do any pictures of any right. thing or person, because only I'm the one who can create things. Uh, in Islam, however, this is carried over. If you look at a mosque, or if you've ever been inside of a mosque, no. there isn't any sort of imagery of any prophets, yeah. or especially Muhammad, as you know, because there's a lot of controversy over that sort of thing. Their architecture tends to be uh, geometric, yeah. so you'll see a lot of shapes, patterns, stuff like that. It's really cool. It's interesting, even though obviously not a fan of religion it's interesting to see how culturally it's affected certain things like yeah. architecture and stuff and then we get to a, pa a passage called the lord is god pretty straightforward um and then we go past the ten commandments which are a thing still uh it says love the lord your god i don't why does he always do the lord your god he's a melodramatic is he a stage actor yeah Wears lots of makeup and he does lots of hand motions so people in the back can understand the emotion he's trying to convey. When I was 20 years old, I walked into a jungle. Walked out 40 years later, a millionaire. That what well, death of a salesman. Ah. I I misquoted, but you little, get the idea. Little 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 uh performance art on the yeah. Bible Reloaded today. Mm. You're welcome. Here's a clip of Death of a Salesman. Exactly what is it that you want from me? I want you to know on the train, in the mountains, in the valleys, wherever you go, that you cut down your life to spite. No. No. Fight! That was, a, that was a good clip. It was a good clip of that. That had Who's uh, that lead actor? The guy from Rain Man. Dustin Hoffman? Dustin Hoffman. That's a good, that's a good movie interpretation of that. He's a shit salesman, though. All right. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a passage. Deuteronomy 10. Yes, we've skipped all the way to 10. Yeah. Tablets like the first ones. No, they're not like the first ones, God. We've already gone over this. But we're not going to talk about that. What we are going to talk about, though, is Aaron. Yeah, so if you move down to uh, Deuteronomy 10, verse 6, it talks about the Israelites traveled from the wells of ben Jakan to Moserah. There Aaron died and was buried. Eleazar and his son succeeded him as priest. So Here it says Aaron died on the way to Moserah uh, between uh, ben Jakan and Moserah. But uh, back in Numbers, it said, uh, where does it say he died? In, it, Numbers? in Numbers 20, 27 through 28, it said Aaron died at Mount Hor. And if you remember, he, we, we stripped him of his clothes for no reason, and he died there. So, two different accounts of where he died. Right. And, and it's interesting because Moses, air quotes, wrote Deuteronomy, was the guy that took Aaron's clothes, forgot the time he took his best friend's clothes off after he died? Brothers. They're best friends too, though. Okay. I would remember the time I stripped any man of their clothes on a mountain. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. And uh, the Joker. <laughs> that would have been an awesome movie. <laughs> this next part comes in Fear the Lord in verse 16 of chapter 10. This <laughs> is just out of context and this is how it should be read. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God. Circumcise your hearts. Hey, God. Yeah. He says circumcise your hearts here. Uh, what do you want me to cut off? Foreskin of your heart. 
Where's, where's that? I can't. I, I got this guy here. I think he's going into shock. He's shaky. He's a little, he's got foam on his mouth. I don't know if he maybe ate some souffle and that's all that's happening. It was metaphorical. Should I have said that was metaphorical? Yeah, I you thought re- you would get it. His chest cavity is open. My hands are covered in the warm blood of a Hebrew man. Oh well, I mean. Get in there now. I mean, this is what do you want me to do now? I can't save his life. We're past modern medicine. I don't even know why I started this. I went into it thinking this isn't gonna work, but I thought, oh, God told me so, so maybe he'll he'll make it he'll make it right, and maybe give me sterile instruments and antibiotics. Do whatever you want to do. I mean, how often do you get above an open chest cavity? Well, I mean, I guess you kill a lot of people, so probably often, but not often are they are they Jewish? Maybe see if their anatomy is different. I don't know. I don't know what's in there. Oh, nope, looks the same. Weird. How's that weird? I don't know. I just thought we just shoved different things in there. I didn't know. Maybe there'd be a shoe or like, hey, hey, candy or something. I don't know. Can- candy? Meat pinata. <laughs> <laughs> then we get to uh, chapter 12, and it talks about uh, their place of worship. One place of worship. Uh, so I'll read a quick passage from that, from verse 2. Destroy completely all places on the high mountains, on the hills, and under every spreading tree where the nations you are dispossessing worship their gods. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and burn their asherish poles in the fire. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. So basically, fuck all the other religions. Yeah. Like, if you are like the guy I met on Twitter recently and believe in Thor... We're supposed to burn, I don't know, your Thor pole down. I don't know if they have Thor poles. We're supposed to tip over Stonehenge. Be like, yeah. And then now at the end of chapter 12, we have something that pertains to laws not changing. Uh, even though modern Christians will often say, well, that was the Old Testament. Here's something that goes against that and says, no, things are like this forever. This comes in verse 32. See that you do all I command you. Do not add to it or take away from it. So that's not even cryptic. Yeah. Don't take anything away from what I am telling you. And you could argue, well, maybe he changed his mind. Well, omniscient Mm. people can't change their minds because they're supposed to know everything. Yeah. Anyways, and then uh, in 13.6, we get to something very interesting. This is my favorite passage, I think, so far. If your very own brother or your son or daughter or the wife you love or your closest friend secretly secretly entices you saying, let us go and worship other gods, (laughs) as they do, you know, like like when you're a teenager, you're like, let's go do drugs. (laughs) They're like, no, let's go worship Baal. You guys want to go eat some weed? (laughs) Gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known. Gods of the people around you, whether they near or far from one end of the land to the other do not yield to them or listen to them show them no pity do not spare them or shield them you must certainly put them to death put to death your loved ones of other religions please so that means don't you don't, you can't marry anyone that's like a different creed yeah your hand must be the first in putting them to death and then the hands of all the people stone them to death because they tried to turn you away from the lord your god who brought you out of egypt a land of slavery then all of Israel will hear and be afraid, and no one amongst you will do such an evil thing again. They're kind of like soccer hooligans. Like, you can't, you can't, like, root for another team, or we'll kick your ass. But with stones and death? Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes soccer hooligans kill people. Not as often as these people do. Moving on, chapter 14, clean and unclean food. Uh, the verse against not eating, uh, shellfish. Of all the creatures living in the water, you may eat any fish that has fins and scales, but anything that does not have fins and scales, you may not eat, for it is unclean. So we can't eat sharks. Fins and scales. Does that mean if it just has fins, no scales, like dolphin? Can I eat dolphin? You can't. That's well, not a fish anyway. It's not a fish, but it's they would con- they would consider it a fish. Yeah, but they you consider can't eat a shark. Shark's delicious. Have you ever had shark? No. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. And then verse 21 uh, <laughs> says a lot about a culture, I think. Uh, do not eat anything you find already dead. You may give it to the foreigner residing in any of your towns, and they may eat it, or you may sell it to any other foreigner, but you are a people holy to the Lord. Do not cook a young goat. Oh, sorry. You can read that. That's a weird, It's just thrown in right at the end. And then, do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. And that's the end of the paragraph. So, like, you can be like, I found this fucking thing on the road. Should I try and sell it to travelers? Yeah, they're stupid as shit. (laughs) Hey, uh, you want to buy this? Buy this? goat it looks like a horse stepped on it no i just it just you're new in town right yeah 
Yeah, no, not really a town. This is a desert. We're both wandering well, through the, to different destinations. There's like six huts over there. There's... Okay, yeah. Don't worry about it. Hey, 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 man. Yeah. You must go. No. Oh, yeah. Clearly, that has clearly been sitting out in the desert for days. Why don't you buy this goat? You see, it's sandy. Its insides are on the outside. Hey, man, buy the fucking goat. I, don't want I can't to... eat the goat! Okay. Good. How much? All of it. All of my money? All of it. Everything you have on you, including your clothes. I guess that's fair. Here you go. Everything. <laughs> Uh, chapter 15, just something about the poor. This is verse 7. If anyone is poor amongst your fellow, fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land of the Lord your God has given you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. Be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. So yeah. Be nice to poor people. Socialism! So God's a socialist. Fucking. I don't know. I don't even know what to call him. Nazi. God, the Nazi. Yes, we know. Don't give us a message. We know socialism and Nazism are are opposites. Yeah, they were fascists. I get it. We're making fun of people who don't get it. So the don't, Nationalist Socialist Party. Don't fucking message us. I'll beat the shit out of I you. I will. I'll beat the shit out of ones you love. Okay, now we're moving on to chapter twenty. Yep. Work that far. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting an axe to them, because you can eat their fruit. Do not cut down the trees. Are the trees people that you should besiege them? <laughs> so we're now con- being considerate of the trees, not but the not the specifically children, specifically not the the people. Yeah. However, you may cut down trees that you know are not fruit trees and use them to build siege works until the city <laughs> city at war with you falls. <laughs> Siege works, <laughs> trebuchets, and <laughs> fucking, I don't know, what are those log things that sw- swing and hit doors? Those things, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Chapter 21, verse 15, the right of the firstborn. If a man has two wives, and he loves one, but not the other, because <laughs> that's common, and both bear him sons, but the firstborn is the son of the wife he does not love, when he wills his property to his sons, he must not give the birthright of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves in preference to his actual firstborn the son of the wife he does not love he must acknowledge the son of his unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double share of all he has <laughs> that son is the first sign of his father's strength the right of the firstborn belongs to him i like how they really drive home this second woman fucking do not love her <laughs> just looks directly into her eyes on their 50th wedding anniversary woman I just don't love you. I don't even like you. You're not even you're not even attractive anymore. This book just says I have to keep you. Next, the rebellious son, verse 18. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them, they discipline him. His father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of his town. Okay? They shall say to the elders, "The son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard." <laughs> What? What if he's not either of those things? What if he's just an asshole? He is. He just is. Then all the men of his town are to stone him to death. You must purge the evil from amongst you. All Israel will hear of it and be afraid. Yeah, because you're killing your kids now. Yeah. Just, is that fucking Dave again? Just Fucking Dave. He's a glutton and a drunkard. He's only seven years old, but that fucking drunkard. What a drunkard. This is an, just an interesting one from chapter 22, verse 6. A woman may not wear a man's clothing, nor a man wear a woman's clothing. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. I'm sorry, RuPaul. What an attractive man, woman. RuPaul. That's one word. Work it, girl. Sashay away. Or whatever. <laughs> Marriage violations. Yeah, this is great. This is wonderful. Verse 13, if a man takes his wife and after sleeping with her dislikes her and slams... <laughs> That's the first time, too. Yeah. That is the first time. Married you. Ooh, we get to bang. You're bad at sex. <laughs> you don't like to lick my toes. I like my toes licked. <laughs> now I dislike you. And slanders her and gives her a bad name saying, I married this woman. But when I approached her, I did not find proof of her virginity. <laughs> so he's like... Yeah, and she's totally not a virgin, taking her back. Then the young woman's father and mother shall bring the town elders at the gate proof that she was a virgin. Her father will say to the elders, I gave my daughter in marriage to this man, but he dislikes her. Now he has slandered her and said, I did not find your daughter to be a virgin. But here is my proof of my daughter's virginity. 
Then her parents shall display the the cloth before the elders of the town. Fun fact. The cloth is the bloody vagina sheet from whence you lost your virginity. Which isn't even a thing that has to happen when you lose your virginity. Right. Like, what if the guy just... He's tender. He likes the foreplay. He gets her well lubed. Like, it's not an issue. <laughs> Spits on it. <laughs> <laughs> Play a little DJ Veggie Twat. How did the parents get this sheet? We're like, hey guys, we got a reverse wedding gift for you. It's the bloody <laughs> vagina sheet. Reverse wedding gift. <laughs> the elders shall take the man and punish him. They shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give them to the young woman's father, because this man has given an Israelite virgin a bad name. She shall continue to be his wife. He must not divorce her as long as he lives. That's an awkward next 20 years. Yeah. Remember that time I tried to say you weren't a virgin? Yeah. Me too. If, however, the charge is true and no proof of the young woman's virginity can be found, then she shall be brought to the door of her father's house, and there the men of the town shall stone her to death. She has done an outrageous thing in Israel by being promiscuous while still in her father's house. You must purge the evil from among you. She's done an outrageous thing and you're about to murder her <laughs> for fucking someone. Or maybe not fucking someone for presuming she fucked what if, someone. What if husband had a tiny wiener? It was like really thin, not really long. Like and spaghetti just, noodle? Yeah, and it just kind of fit within the, the slit. I don't know. Without stretching much. Verse 23, if a man happens to meet in a town a virgin pledged to be married and he sleeps with her, you shall take both of them to the gate of the town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she is in town, did not scream for help. And the man, because he violated another man's wife. You must purge the evil among you. Yes, they're killing the woman for not screaming loud enough during what can presume to be rape and or consensual sex. But the, the thing... Why, why mention the fact that she should be struggling and calling for help? So if you get raped and you're a virgin and you're pledged to be married, you're going to be killed a if you're not found before the rape is complete. Yeah. Now there's the progress bar rape, 43%. <laughs> Verse 28, if a man happens to meet a virgin who he is not pledged to be married and rapes her and they are discovered, he shall pay her father 50 shekels of silver. He must marry the young woman, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. This seems almost in direct opposition to the other law, almost as if it's implying that the other law, she didn't scream loud enough, like, in consensual sex. Yeah. Like, so this time, it really definitely is rape, and he just has to marry her and pay for her. Yeah, what the fuck? How come he doesn't have to get killed? I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, so now, not only were you raped and you had to deal with that, you have to spend the rest of your life alongside your rapist, and if you, have, if you haven't noticed before, your womanly duty is to have sex with the man forever to bear him children. So you're forced to have sex with the man that raped you forever. Mm -hmm. Chapter 23. No one who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. So any fucked up pe which, you know, no one has been emasculated by crushing or cutting. So if there's any circumcision incidents ever, <laughs> yeah, that's which has I'm to happen, that's got to happen occasionally. Yeah. Also, testicles is what is more what they're talking about. But dicks, too, probably. Yeah. Do you have like a weird dick where you have like shrivelly balls that look like they maybe maybe someone stepped on them once when you were? I don't know. I don't know what you're into. So then a bunch of other stuff happens. Uh, uninteresting things, just some curses and stuff. And then we kind of get a prelude to Moses' death. He blesses all the tribes of Israel and stuff. Uh, he kind of talks to Joshua a bit. There's a song of Moses. And then we finally get to chapter 34, the death of Moses. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab at the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gildan to Dan, all of the Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Anessa, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, and the whole region from the valley of Jericho to the city of Palms as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promise you on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when he said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not come across or into it. Because I'm a douche. <laughs> and Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said.
buried him in Moab. So the Lord buried him. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Just pats the dirt. Well, that's where Moses is. <laughs> Gotta put a flag there so I don't forget. <laughs> flag blows over and it's like, shit, where'd I put Moses' body? Fuck. <laughs> but to this day, no one knows where his grave is. That's convenient. <laughs> Moses was 120 years old when he died. Because, yeah, people lived that long. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Because he was a really... He's like Jack Lane. He's a healthy dead guy. <laughs> Jack Lane. <laughs> the Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. How did they know he died? What if they were just... Maybe he just left. Because no one knows where he's buried. He right? just died on a mountain. He's like, I'm going up to that mountain, guys, probably to die. I, I don't know. Then we get to the final part of Deuteronomy. Verse 9. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or the perform the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all of Israel. That explains why we can't see God's miracles again. Yeah, that explains it. Anyways, so we just got through a whole fucking chapter of the Bible in one episode. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. That's right, season four, we're getting good at this. Snap, snap, snap. Yeah, we just do Deuteronomy in one blow. There's yeah. places where you can go for... Really, really good breakdowns of Deuteronomy and Deuteronomic law and all that shit. We're not that. Yeah. Um. So since it's the first episode of the season, we'll do a little recap of stuff that that's happened since the last break. Mm, we moved into a new place. That's the big one. Yeah. Jake and I and both our girlfriends are living in a two room apartment now. Two Pretty room. Nice. Two bedroom. Two bedroom. Makes it sound really fucking <laughs> just, tiny. Yeah, we, we sleep just, together in the book med. No, it's a two bedroom apartment. Uh, it's nice. It's pretty good. We're recording there now, so if it sounds different, it's because the acoustics are different because we're in a different room. Now, hopefully, also episodes should be come out more consistently because not only are we together more often, we can upload from our house. We have. If you good didn't internet. know, yeah. we've had shitty internet. And we've had to go off site to upload every episode so far. Sixty episodes uploaded during our free time like at barnes and noble or mcdonald's yeah this is a labor of love yeah so finally we have good internet which is nice uh and speaking of that we're planning on maybe doing a live thing with you guys eventually maybe mm -hmm. a live episode or a q a or something yeah probably gonna be a q a because uh you guys have asked us questions about ourselves and sometimes we can't get to it and we haven't really told you a whole story about us so what we're gonna do is uh right before that happens we're gonna probably make a short video like hey put your questions on this right here and we'll answer them and we'll pick like you know however many and it also hopefully we can make it live we can do a google hangout where me and Hugh can just sit here and do it live and also be up for later so if you weren't around you know didn't have time to do it you can watch it yeah but that way you guys can chat with us and then we can respond as we go and it'll be a fun time yeah um <sighs> We're also writing, we're starting work on the Bible Reloaded Volume 1, our book, based on this series. Yeah, it's going to be different uh, than the stuff we've uh, done already, um, because that would be boring if we did the same. But so far, I think it's really good. Yeah, it's funny. So uh, we'll let you guys know when the book is ready to launch, and then you guys can buy the first volume. Because we are literally doing what we do here, we don't want to do it all in one book, because it would be huge to do the whole Bible, plus our comments yeah. on it. So what we're going to do are major stories. So you're going to see creation, Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, the flood, Jesus' death, and... It'll be awesome, and it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it won't be too expensive. It'll it'll probably be like 10 maybe 15 bucks, yeah. and it'll be cheaper for like a Nook uh, Kindle version. Yeah. It'll be fun, though. Yeah. Also, we are a member of the Secular Programming family. Um, if you haven't heard anything about that, uh, that is... It's basically... It's a, it's a group of different atheist different, podcast yeah. writers. We're having a magazine. There's a blog... It's awesome. We have really great stuff on there, like uh, No God Cast, Adam Reeks, you know, just really great guys. Um, Jake Far Wharton from the Imaginary Friends podcast is on there. Uh, so it's a big collective, and it's a lot of fun. So you'll see us pimp that kind of shit from now on, because uh, it's a good time. And you guys should go watch that. Yep. So, shirts. 
We have Donation Box. Follow us on Twitter, at Bobble Reloaded and at Hugo Reloaded. I love you. Uh-huh. Until... Oh, no, not you. Them. Okay. I love you guys. I hate you guys. Until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been the Bobble Reloaded. Next week, we try and produce a quality audio program and probably fail. Thank <laughs> you.